Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Cafe Anyway. Hello and welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast. I am your host, Mike Matthews, your civil... Mike's Daily Podcast. Your civil, kind, calm, genteel show host. And this is the show where I do the most work of my day. Now I'm going to go back to sleep. No, I'm back up. Because it's Saturday and you should be enjoying the one you love, hanging out with them, saying, hey, you're really awesome. Mike's Daily Podcast. And you can't, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, right? Am I right? David Crosby. Mike's. Oh, wait, that was not him. Daily. It was the other guy. Podcast. It was Stills. No? Yeah. Yeah, Stephen Stills. That's right. Don't contradict me on this stuff. I know what it is. Okay, here we go. Today, we're finding out about Trump, about how he's feeling. How is the president feeling today? This is what I am fascinated about. Like, we have the right to know. He is our president. He, if, if the president's sick, just remember what happened with Reagan, the last Republican president to get really sick. Well, actually, you could look at George... H.W. Bush, the dad. Remember when he puked on the? <laughs> was it? Was it? A, was it in Japan or China? I forget. Now, and he got sick and threw up and fainted or something. And all right, this happens. It's a stressful job. He got the coronavirus, as you know, and he is. Last we checked, they they gave him some cocktail. And then uh, he's doing better now, apparently. The fever's gone, so that's good. But everybody, okay, so it's completely okay for you and I to know everything that's happening with our president. As far as, like, how he's feeling right now, we are, well, as of today, we are a month from the election. And here's today's podcast picture. Oh, yeah, and please register to vote. And don't be my friend Mike, who goes on and on about how you shouldn't vote because it's it's futile and useless. And then I tell him, get the hell out of this country. And then he tells me I have a right to be here. And then we go on and on and on, and it never ends. And we've known each other since high school, and we try to be civil and calm and genteel and nice. And yet it blows up into a huge argument every time. And now he and I are reduced to just texting each other once every three weeks. That's right, Basil. Oh, Basil liked Mike, though. Mike was great with Basil, that's for sure. They had fun playing. That's right, my little boy. I was telling somebody today how everybody, I wish the whole world could have a Basil. Basil was the best dog ever, and I just the nicest, kindest... Big dog I think I have ever known And I think most people would say they had But Basil had friends there. I made friends through Basil And now I'm finding out that Those friends were actually friends with Basil And not really me And then they, they took off Oh Basil's not around anymore? Bye But that's the kind of dog he was He had this tremendous Calming, kind Civil, genteel effect on people I wonder what the, the the name of the show is going to be. Is it going to be Genteel? Gentile? I don't know. Hey, by the way, I did not know that both of Eugene Levy's kids were in Schmidt's Creek. Yes, I threw an M in there just to be a little bit safe with the... With, not this, that this is ever going to be on the radio, but whatever. But Mike, that's the name of the show. You should be allowed to say Bleeps Creek Because that's what the show's called Yeah There's a guy I know in radio Who wants so badly to cuss on the air And this is the show that's allowing him to do that And he he takes advantage of it And it's wrong You're still saying that word And the FCC is still going to come down on you When the FCC eventually is Back in business Let me tell you something by the way about the FCC If you didn't know if you're not in radio They come in And they have the right to take all your money They are worse than the IRS They will come in 
They will audit you They will take all your you, Oh you didn't do this This and this We're taking And they, they come up with Some crazy number And they extract it from you I know this Because I know Two radio companies That had to do Deal with them On that level So if you think FCC is just Some organization Doesn't do anything Oh believe me They do And it's interesting It's ironic that During the Trump administration They've been way more powerful Doing way more stuff Than during the Obama years And this is someone Our current president Is all about deregulating everything Remember the last Republican president To deregulate a bunch of stuff Reagan He did so much deregulation in radio That now all of a sudden That created all these massive conglomerate stations When I first started in radio in the 80s I was working for mom and pop companies They maybe owned two or three stations Then after well, somewhere in the mid '90s, after well, Reagan deregulated stuff in the in the in the '80s, but all this stuff finally really kicked in in the '90s, and there were companies owning owning hundreds of radio stations, and suddenly my mom and pop is getting the station that I'm working for, the mom and pop station I'm working for is being bought up by a huge company conglomerate buying up all these radio stations. So now we got flash forward. To today Fast forward Flash dance To today And we've got Trump deregulating Yet At the same time The FCC stronger than ever And a jeep pie And all that So Here in the podcast world We can say whatever we want So I could cuss But I don't I choose not to So you can let your kids listen And go Mommy mommy What the heck is he talking about To that end (laughs) Even though This guy's mom Said A somewhat naughty word on my show recently I mean, I guess technically it's not a naughty word Because it is an actual thing that you find in literature As we go outside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10 today Shall we listen to this particular uh, message here? If I can find it outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10 Where are you? Message Here it is. Okay, here we go. Let's listen. Hey, Mike. This is your employee and good friend, Ken. I just wanted to call and say it was a great episode last uh, yesterday. I really enjoyed it. Um, I just want to clarify a couple things, though. I didn't tell you that I took a picture of myself wearing a Dodger hat at a Dodger game and it got on Snapchat. All I said was that I posted something. There was actually a video of the Dodgers hitting, uh, I think it was like a two-run triple or something like that. So, just to be clear, okay? And I also wanted to point out, you guys talked about so many Fleetwood Mac songs, yet you never mentioned the one good song, or actually one great song, Gypsy. I mean, that's my that's one of my favorite Gypsy. songs. I know everybody says dreams, but I think Gypsy's right up there. Anyway, have a good one. I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Also, it was a fabulous musical, Gypsy, with the fabulous Ruby Keeler. She was amazing. <laughs> That's Mike Flamboyant. Please don't let that ever happen again, but it did happen. And let me tell you, this is a fact. Ruby Keeler, who was in Gypsy, I believe, I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure. She was in Gypsy, and she came to my baby shower. Yes. The famous Ruby Keeler was at my baby shower My mom has told me over and over again Actually, she only told me that once And I was like, really? Because I remember my grandma My dad's mom Dorothy Dorothy was a good friend of Ruby Keeler's And I remember with my grandma Watching the Academy Awards This must have been late 70s it uh, 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 John Wayne was still alive And he was up there He was getting honored by everyone I think he was pretty sick at this point So they wanted to honor him Before he passed Because they knew you know, he wouldn't be around much longer Ruby Keeler gets up there uh, She wasn't honoring John Wayne But it was something I think she was being honored that night And my grandma was like Oh that's my friend Ruby Keeler I'm like Grandma who's Ruby Keeler And she's like Oh she's a famous She was a famous dancer Way back in the Golden days of Hollywood And I was Oh So anywho Ruby Keeler There you go There you go Oh The other song from that album By the way Ken Hold Me Which 
it's one of those songs that if you try and sing the chorus, nobody knows what the heck you're talking about. I can't bend it down to I just never bend it down news. But it did it. Hold me, hold me. That one. It's not one of those choruses I can sing that you'll recognize, but that was on that album. Great song. All right. Thank you for sharing that with us, Ken. And like I said, okay, and I got the story wrong about the Dodger thing. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. And like I will reiterate, his mom is awesome. Okay. And I think she's listening to the show. So there you go. Good shout out to her. The podcast picture today, by the way, I feel as if I will go to a picture I took yesterday in Niles, California. I was on my way to work, driving up Mission from Podcaster Valley to Fremont. And I stopped in the town of Niles and I saw these beautiful flowers. I took a picture. See that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. Actually, there was a couple of cool pictures I took yesterday in Niles. And this is one that stood out. So see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. Let's get to some other stuff too. By the way, so I'm, I was bringing up the whole thing about Trump mainly because I, I find it interesting that you and I, we are concerned, right? We're concerned about the, the how our president is feeling and all that. Yet there are people on the right who will say to you, but out of his business. He's fine. This is all a hoax. <laughs> I heard that yesterday from a Trump supporter. No, this is all a ho- Actually, I heard this from someone who didn't support Trump, too. This is a hoax. He's not really sick. He's doing this to get publicity. He's doing this to get more support. Uh, he's worried about how the debate went. Interesting. Well, I guess... That's one way of looking at it. They, uh, and right-wing hosts saying media is paying too much attention to this, uh, that this is not a big deal. But here's something else. And I, he- I heard uh, someone more on the liberal side say this last night. We are the biggest country, the strongest country, the best country in the world. I am going to be all patriotic on you. Yet, how on earth does our president... How do we not protect our president, let alone our people? Uh, Our people are, are, you know, people getting this disease like crazy in our country. Even our president gets it. And so what's going on? Is it, can we blame this all on the president? Did he not protect us enough? I'm finding with Trump, and I guess with any president, it's about benefit, getting giving someone the benefit of the doubt. And this stretches to all kinds of things with Trump. Do we give him the benefit of the doubt? Did he condemn white supremacists enough? Has he done it? Did he ever do it? Does he love white supremacists? Does he, does he call them up and go, hey, what's going on, white supremacist? Do we give him the benefit of the doubt or not? And you know, when you listen to right-wing radio, you're hearing them give him the benefit of the doubt like crazy. And then you listen to left-wing radio or you listen to NPR and they're very critical and and analyze every little thing he does. And they fill up their programming, their entire day's programming with stuff that, well, he didn't say this, so that must mean he's pro this, which I don't agree with that exactly. Because if you flip that around and it's a Democratic president, if you do the same amount of analysis like that, then you get a little bit, you're, 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 it's not, it's not going to get you anywhere in the end. It's not productive. That's all I'm saying. But I would like to say that I don't want white supremacists destroying my country. I don't want black matterists destroying my country. Black lives matterists, whatever you call them. But I don't either side, nobody destroy my property, my town. Don't destroy it is all I'm saying. Let's, I'm sort of in the camp of let's not blow stuff up. Even though I know you're going to say, some of you out there, well, it's about time we make a statement. Hey, here's a statement I got from Eric Swalwell, my local congressman who ran for president uh, earlier this year and quickly got the heck out. 
He says my thoughts and prayers are with the president and first lady as they battle this debilitating virus that has already claimed more than 200,000 American lives and infected over 7 million. This pandemic is far from over and we must keep doing all we can to protect ourselves, our families and our fellow Americans. It's time we all mask up, keep a distance and wash our hands. And if anything can be said about the president, it was obvious he was not keeping his distance. He was not masking up. There were several times we saw him like with the, with the, with the, what's her, what's her name? The, the, um, oh shoot. Well, several people he wasn't masking up with and Hope, Hope Hicks, there we go. Hope Hicks was infected. And they were talking on the helicopter. She didn't have a mask on and she was already infected. It's the only way out of this unnecessary protracted national nightmare, says Eric Swalwell. Meanwhile, the house has had, has had a busy uh, rough and tumble two weeks and I wanna share the news with you. And he goes into talking about the COVID-19 relief bill um, and other stuff, but there you go. Just got that from him last night. Oh, and also there's a scholarship opportunity from a podcast. Yes, oh, first off in podcast news, did not know Reba McIntyre has a podcast, Reba. Reba McIntyre's got a podcast and she interviews Jane Fonda in it. And they talk about looking good, the older you get. And I just found that fascinating. And by the way, I talk about it on the radio and I'll have more info about that at the end of the show. On a, on a radio, internet radio station, you'll be able to hear it. Okay. Finally, a modern musician podcast. They're trying to get people to listen by giving away a $30,000 artist development scholarship. And they sent me an email about it. Modern musician podcast. Oh, they're launching. It's a podcast that's launching. To which I say, that's great if you launch a podcast. Let's see if you last as many F F episodes as I have. Today being 2132, 2132. Yes, that's great, modern musician, if you want to launch your podcast. But do you, in fact, will you last is what we want to know. But I guess you could Google or Bing modern musician podcast. I heard this from a guy named Michael Walker who somehow got a hold of me. I don't know how. Um, and then finally this. Okay, so I share the same initials as Michael Medved. Michael Medved, I first saw him on PBS of all places doing a film review type show, like a Siskel and Ebert type thing. And he ended up being a conservative talk show host. Uh, I would say on the spectrum of crazy right wing wing nut person to being a little more civil, a little more moderate. He is a little more closer to the moderate side, but he did say this about systemic racism. And I found this fascinating. It's a popular phrase to say systemic racism these days. He says it ignores the realities of how our current system of law, politics, business, and culture really works. And here's what I found interesting what he says. In legal terms, racism has been illegal. Yes, it is illegal. And it has been for 50 years now. 50 years. It did it it it, it has it's you can look it up. It's true. Uh, let's go back to Lyndon Johnson with that. And Martin Luther King was there at the signing of I forget which which particular um, Civil Rights Equality Act. He he maybe it was the Equality Act. I forget what it was. But for 50 years now, it's been illegal to be ra uh, racism has been illegal, even though everyone is seems to be racist in some way. But it bans. Uh, racism has been illegal for 50 years now with bans on discrimination in hiring, housing, education, and more. Yes, racist attitudes still exist, but the system and our culture now works against them. 
The system and our culture now work against them, not for them. In politics, 12% of the House of Representatives is now black. That's closely matching the black percentage of the population. And the nation twice elected a black president. In business, discrimination not only violates the law, but hurts the bottom line. Does it still exist? Yes. And we should always fight. And I'm, I'm adding a little to this. Yes, it does exist. It needs to be stopped. It, it, However, it is in business discrimination not only violates the law, but hurts the bottom line in hiring and customers when 40% of America identifies as non-white. Just thought that was interesting that that pointed, was pointed out. So to just keep a little bit, I don't know, of civility, civility in our society, how crazy it gets sometimes. And the whole us versus them world that we live in When really this is so manufactured The us versus them Um, And that's another thing I want to talk about at some point That um, Oh by the way Just this real quick thought After 10 years couldn't Skype come up with a better ringtone That stupid loop that's not even a loop Boop 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 and it sounds like it's it's out of it, it, it's it, I hate that ringtone. What? Um, that needs to be stopped. They get, they need to update their ringtone after ten years. By the way, you know what else is ten years old? Social media. I mean the social network. Not social media. We had MySpace well over ten years ago, but uh, the social network with Justin Timberlake and Jesse Eisenberg. They're uh, ten years old now. That movie As of um, uh, I think it was Thursday But what I was saying earlier The dehumanizing of the other We need to pay attention to that We forget about That we're all human That the other side consists of humans And they're not monsters, they're humans And this cancel culture Which goes back to Reba McIntyre Who said something very interesting about cancel culture I was listening to an interview with her. It wasn't on her podcast. It was something else. I think a Canadian talk show was interviewing her. And how she said with this cancel culture, it's very, very dangerous because we are not listening to each other. We're just automatically canceling. I don't want to hear you. And it's just what it is, is it's what I'm doing right now. It's a lot of talk, talk, talk. That was a 90s, I mean, an 80s uh, new wave band, talk, talk. All they're doing to me is talk, talk. It's my life. Uh, Holland. The, the lead singer's last name was Holland. Cafe anyway. We talk, talk, and we don't listen, listen. And it goes back to something I'm sure Reba heard from her parents. God gave you two eyes and one mouth and two ears. With the two ears, God's trying to tell you something. Listen. Look and listen before you yap, yap, yap. Do a little bit more listening than yapping. And I think as a society, we probably need to do a lot more of that. Listen, stop, look, what's going on, as Stephen Still said with Buffalo Springfield. And it all goes back to that, doesn't it? Look who's outside a cafe anyway. We're at Radio Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Tin, the last place on earth. Cafe anyway. Yes, Michael Masu, I dated Steven Stills. Ooh. He's in a great documentary. He's in a documentary uh, about the music of Laurel Canyon, all the music that came out of there. And there's a fun conversation between him and the, Jacob Dylan from The Wallflowers. That's nice, Michael Masu. Ooh. Did you like uh, the, the band, the band uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young? Yes. Did you date all the guys in that band? Yes. Did you ever date Jackson Brown? No. Oh, that's too bad. He's also in this movie. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino the Burger King Ding Ding. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, that's really great. You talking about that TV show, Schmidt's Creek Day. Yeah, cussing's bad. Do you know that? Yes. Uh, Schmidt's Creek, we watched the episode last night 
that had what's his name? Is it? Oh, John Morrison, Jim Morrison, not Jim Morrison. He was with the Doors. The guy, he's got that phenomenal voice, and I, in fact, favorited it on my YouTube because I was like, this song is awesome. Um, it was he, he's James Morrison, Precious Love. It was in the season finale of season two of Schmidt's Creek, and yes. So well done It was just a great episode I I, st- I ended watching Because I would have binged Watch another 50 shows From that TV show On Netflix But I thought this is a good way to, Good place to stop time to, time to go to sleep And time to end the show Next show It's going to be The one full mm, Shelly Shuhart Floyd the foreman And John Deere the engineer You can comment About anything I chatted about today 336MM daily 3 plus 3 equals 6MM As in Mike Matthews Daily As in what this podcast Uh, We'll try to be We'll try to be We'll try and bring you another one tomorrow Take it away A-Frame Oh And before you do that A-Frame I'm on KKDV.com tomorrow From 9am to 4pm tomorrow You can hear me playing music And chit-chatting about some of the stuff I covered today That's KKDV.com There's a link at the website Mike'sDailyPodcast.com With more on that A-Frame Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.